Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to be looking at these and a few other items as well. Now, these are made by MK, and what we have here is some examples from two different ranges. Now, this one is called Logic Plus. These have been available for over 20 years. This uh, came out in the mid-90s sometime, and still available now. So they've been around for a considerable time, but uh, this one, also made by MK, this is called MK Essentials. And uh, essentially it's a new range that came out last year, that's 2019. So we're going to have a look at what the differences are between these two ranges. Now first of all let's have a look at the MK website to see what the deal is with these. Now, so the Logic Plus has been available for well over 20 years, so nothing new there. It's pretty much the standard MK range of white socket switches and whatever else. So this is the page for all the essentials. Um, you can see here the uh, features benefits designed for smaller budgets, so uh, this is really the uh, key point here. This essential range is basically a cheaper version. Other things that we've got designed for trusted reliability, 25 year guarantee. That's pretty much the same as the others, although the Logic Plus apparently only has a 20 year guarantee. And then designed for installers with features like backed out screws, well, Logic Plus has those as well. And designed for good looks, well, that's just really a matter of opinion as to whether these look better or worse or the same. So. The key point here is that they are cheaper, in other words they are cheaper to purchase. Now the question is how much cheaper? Now we've got here three examples from each range. We've got a single socket outlet, a single gang two-way light switch, and also a fused connection unit. Very very common items, used probably extensively in pretty much any installation. Now let's have a look at CEF's website first of all. So you can see here that the uh, Logic Plus socket is £2.50 and the uh, essential socket is £1.50, so that's a saving of a pound. These prices exclude VAT. Fuse connection units is 587 for the Logic Plus, 321 for the essentials, so that's a fairly large saving there of £2.66. And the switch, £1.71 for the uh, Logic Plus, and the essentials range, 99 pence. So uh, again, a saving there of 72 pence. Now CF aren't exactly known for being the cheapest around, so let's have a look at someone else. This is the Screwfix website, and I've picked these mainly because they just happen to sell both ranges. It proved to be quite difficult to find companies that actually had both at the same time. But uh, anyway, Screwfix, uh, the socket there is two for 29, and these include VAT in this particular case. And then the Essentials version is 239, so that's actually 10 pence more than the Logic Plus range, so that doesn't really make a lot of sense. The fuse connection unit there is 506 for the Logic Plus Essentials range, 479. So yeah, that is cheaper, but only by 27 pence, so not exactly saving a big pile of money there. And then finally the light switch, uh, £1.38 for the Logic Plus, and then the cheaper Essentials range is £1.99. So that's actually a 61 pence increase, so again that doesn't really make a lot of sense either in view of the pricing. Of course other retailers and suppliers are available. Now let's just have a look at the uh, items we've got here. They're still in the wrapping, I haven't actually undone them yet, so uh, just have a look at that and see what differences we can see between them. Now this is what we've got here, we've got the Logic Plus on the top there, and the Essentials range here at the bottom, and uh, this one's sideways in the pack for some reason, but that's how it was supplied. So they're all white, so they're made of a compound of plastic material, and they're basically the same equivalent items. So this one uh, this light switch on the Logic Plus range that says made in the UK, as do both of these. This is the Essentials range, and uh, we'll look at the bottom there, made in China. So there's a major difference straight away. These are made in the UK, these are not. Now there's nothing necessarily wrong with making things in China, but nevertheless making stuff in China is almost certainly going to be cheaper than making it in the UK, because of course labour costs and whatever they're are considerably lower than they are here. So uh, that's one of your main differences. So let's get these out of the packaging. So that's them out of the packaging. One notable difference straight away is that these just go in the plastic bag. Screws are actually clipped on the back of the plate there. And it's the same for the others as well, just uh, clip down in there. Whereas the Essentials range, screws come in a small plastic bag, so extra packaging waste there. And then they also have an additional piece of plastic over the front of the thing itself, so a lot of extra packaging going on there. Now this extra plastic bag is actually over this front piece, so that's your item there, 
And then this front piece, which is a clip-on cover, is in its own separate plastic bag. So, so a whole pile of extra packaging waste. And of course, when you're going to install these, it's going to take extra time to remove all of this extraneous packaging. So not a particularly uh, wonderful start there. Imagine doing this a hundred times because you're fitting out a whole house with them. So uh, that's got rid of that. And then the screws come in these annoying crackly plastic bags which uh, are a right pain to get open. And MK isn't the only company that do this. Plenty of companies supply them in these. I really don't see the point. And they can clip on the back of the things themselves. So that's the things unpacked. Now the next major difference is what these are actually made from. These are made from a hard and relatively brittle material. If you drop this on a concrete floor it's more than likely going to bust. Some kind of uh, urea formaldehyde material. Previously these would have been made out of a bakelite material or phenolic resin. It's a similar kind of idea. The uh, point about this is this is a thermoset plastic which means that when it gets hot it doesn't melt and drip on the floor it just goes a bit black and chars and quite often smells of rotting fish. So a fairly common item for electrical accessories. Obviously it's not overheating and it's very rigid. It doesn't bend or flex at all. And that's the same for all three of those. Now these things are not made from that material. These are made from polycarbonate according to the specifications. And it actually says on the document here a screwless range of wiring accessories in white polycarbonate with a high gloss finish. Now they certainly are. They're not actually screwless. It just means that the screws are not actually visible on the front there because of course they go in here and then this piece clips on afterwards. But uh, there we go and it's high gloss. Now the difference with polycarbonate is that it's bendy. So as you see there it bends quite easily. Certainly uh, a bit more flexible there. Whether this burns or not is another matter. We'll be testing that out at a later time. They're all basically the same kind of material. Some are more rigid than others. These are a bit more rigid because the piece on the back is of course larger. All of these have the MK logo on the bottom right corner, so just down there. This has it in the middle here. These other two don't have it at all. So this is the back of the three items. So this is the light switch here. Notice that the uh, central one is considerably smaller, at least in that dimension, than the one we've got here. The uh, fuse spur here, or fuse connection unit, turn it in line on the Logic Plus. This is fairly typical of most of the manufacturers where they're fairly randomly spaced around the thing. And then this is the socket. So again on the Logic Plus there the socket terminals are all in a line. And then this one of course they are not. And these of course proudly stamped on the back is made in China on all three. Another interesting point on these is that they have holes in the corners as well as the two normal fixing points. So just remove that it's got, say, four holes, one at each corner. Now, not entirely clear what that's going to be used for, certainly in the UK. There are no socket boxes which uh, would use those. It's only going to be these on either side. So a fairly odd choice there, but maybe it's designed for some other market as well. Uh, fixing screws supplied with them, pretty much identical. That's uh, all of them there, so same size, colour, material, whatever else. Apart from these, these are the ones on the Logic Plus light switch, which are shorter, whereas the other one comes with uh, longer screws there. But apart from that, they all seem to be pretty much the same material. And you'll see there, they all stick to the magnet, so they're uh, steel with a nickel plating, which again is pretty much standard for all of this type of thing. Now let's compare the uh, light switches here. This is the Logic Plus, so all one piece there with the screws uh, visible there. Now depth on the back there we can see is around 10 millimetres. So this will fit into a 16 millimetre wall box. Now 16 millimetre boxes aren't particularly common now. You can still buy them. 25 is certainly a more common choice these days. But uh, nevertheless if you've got a 16 then this will definitely fit. So we've got about 10 millimetres there. And the wires on these actually come out of the terminals here. So they're going to come out the back and add a small amount of extra depth there. And the other one's at the bottom here. So mainly those two there, but you see those are actually recessed anyhow, so it's not going to be a problem to fit that. This is the uh, Essentials range, and you can see straight away this sticks out massively more than the other one, so let's check on the uh, stick out distance of this one. So as you see there, that's around 23 millimeters. so if you've got a 60 millimeter wall box, there's absolutely no way that this is going to fit. Clearly uh, 
that's far more than 16. And even with a 25, you might actually have some difficulty because, again, the wires go on the back here. So when the wires come out, there is, of course, going to be some extra space required for the wire to loop across. Now, I'll show you in here. This is a wire here. This is one millimeter squared, about the smallest size you're going to use for anything. The larger size exists. So when that's in there, of course, it would normally be stripped there. You're going to have to actually bend this around like that. So there's obviously going to be a certain alley depth because of the wire there itself. So you know, if you put that in position, that's right on the 25. So you put this in a 25 millimeter wall box, that is going to be pressed up against the back of the metal box, which really is not ideal. So realistically, this is going to need a 35 millimeter wall box, which is certainly an uncommon choice on lighting installations. Now, of course, if it was a new installation and you knew you were going to fit these, Obviously you could uh, put those in, but certainly for refitting an existing installation, this is definitely not a good choice. Here is a 25mm box, and if we just place that on there, it's in the wall, so this would normally be uh, over it like that, then yes, in that arrangement it does fit. But again, once you've got your wire in the back there, As you can see, that's leaving pretty much zero clearance between the wire and the back of the box. So it will just about fit, but really uh, that's not enough clearance there. It's not really clear why they've made this so huge. It's obviously uh, not necessary to do that. But uh, certainly with a 16, it's absolutely no chance whatsoever. Now, another thing with these is these clip-on covers just uh, snap off there like that and clip on. Now these are designed to only fit one way because the logo of course uh, on the corner there so that's actually upside down. And that's the top where it says made in China. Now if you're going to fit this on the wall like this you better make sure that these are the right way up because this is the right way up. That fits on very easily. If you fitted this switch upside down, which wouldn't matter necessarily from the wiring point of view, you could just swap the wires over. But if you fitted this on the wall upside down guess what? The front doesn't actually fit. It'll snap on at one edge, but it won't snap on over there. So yeah, these only fit one way, despite the fact that they appear almost symmetrical, but that edge does not clip in, unless of course it's this way, in which case it uh, fits properly. So nothing to be aware of with that. Now another problem with this, as well as the huge uh, stick out there, is the terminals. Now where the wires go in here, which is on the back, that's pretty well recessed in there, so not a particular problem with that. But uh, this center screw here, that's actually fully in. And as you can see, it sticks out quite a noticeable distance, and that's with no terminal or wire in the terminal. Now, of course, in reality, there's going to be a wire in there, so this is going to be out even further. So with the wire, just one installed in the terminal and tightened down so that is grip there. That's how far out that screw is sticking. Now, Obviously this is going to be inside the wall box, so uh, not in reach of normal persons, but if someone was to take this switch off the wall while it was still live, and yes that happens all the time even though it shouldn't, this is going to be an exposed part here rather than being recessed away such as those, so very easy to uh, touch that. And then the other problem is we saw earlier that there's not going to be a lot of clearance between the back of the box and the wire, and as you can see there, there's not going to be a lot of clearance between that live terminal and the back of the box either, so that it's really uh, not a whole lot of distance there. And the same thing, that would obviously be that way, but this is pretty much at the 25mm depth of that one. And although there is obviously a gap there, it's certainly not a particularly large gap. So a bit of a mystery why they've gone for this huge stick out on the back here. It doesn't really seem to achieve a whole lot, and it just seems to uh, be something that's going to cause problems in plenty of installations. Now these are the two uh, fuse connection units. Basically it's a double pole switch and a fuse, 13 amp supplied as standard. Same kind of deal there. The position of the switch is somewhat different, but it's got the uh, screw in there and the screw in that one. So let's see how the screws work. Now on the Logic Plus uh, these always were a bit weird because as you turn the screw it does actually pull the tray out of it. You generally have to sort of ease the uh, thing out as you go. And then once it gets to a certain distance, it will uh, pull out fully. And uh, that's pretty much been the case for quite some time. And then your fuse is in the side there that just slots out from the side. And there we have 13 amp fuse that's made by 
sim in this particular case. So now to put these back together, it's a case of uh, putting the fuse into the drawer there from the side, pressing that in as far as it goes, and then at the same time as pressing it, you have to actually tighten up the screw until it all goes in flush like that. So just uh, how those things actually operate. Do not try to shove it in and then tighten it, because otherwise it will uh, break something. And on this one, the flex screw is on the back here. It's got this removable piece. Flex will just uh, press down between those. And there's your terminals on the back, all of which are in line on these ones. So supply there, base of the power coming in. And then the uh, corresponding load on the other side. Now this one also has a screw in the front there. Let's just undo that and see what gives. As you see, this is completely flush as well. So I assume it's going to be a similar sort of deal there. Yeah, well, eventually it does uh, pull forward. I do have to keep undoing this until it comes out all the way. I assume so. But uh, it does seem to have a very fine thread on it. Well, that's as far as it goes. So now we're supposed to just pry around the edge and uh, get the thing out. Now, the problem with this is that this being made of polycarbonate, Polycarbonate is a fairly soft material, and unfortunately it's easily scratched, so I just thought I've already graunched the uh, screw off several times there. Let's see if I can just get this out of here. This is not looking particularly impressive, is it? And bearing in mind, I'd be doing this when it was on the wall, so you wouldn't be able to hold it or whatever. Let's see if I can get this damn thing out of here. Right, well. This is certainly not particularly impressive, but uh, right there it goes. So there we go, there's the fuse in the side there, and it's the kind it's just so sort of that uh, SEM fuse again, same as before, and it just sort of slots in there and then shoves in, and the screw there, quite lengthy, goes into that uh, thing down in the back. So let's see if these are going to have to have fuses replaced, they're going to end up being scratched and ruined. So. And again, putting it back in is presumably press it into the screw engages and then tighten up the uh, squeaky, creaky screw. The screw head doesn't seem to fit the thing particularly well, but nevertheless, it's gone back in there. So that's that one. This uh, plug on this one is presumably removable. Yeah, so you can just break out the uh, thing there, it pops out. So then your flex comes out the front of this one rather than the bottom on the other one. So some minor difference. And then the flex would go through the hole. And it's one of these sort of lever type affairs where you'll have to press that up. The flex goes through there where the screwdriver is. And then it just bites down onto it so it doesn't pull back through. Terminals on this are all in a random sort of order. This is actually very common on most of these. The uh, all in the line is actually quite unusual. So uh, not too different from those ones. They do appear to be made out of a decent amount of brass there. And uh, these are all fairly well recessed in there, so errant fingers aren't hopefully going to get to them. These are sticking out, but these are the earth connections anyway, so that wouldn't particularly matter. So on this one it's load neutral here, supply line there, load L over there and then the neutral uh, supplies at the bottom there with the screw on a side angle. Let's just see what these are like. So they open and close fairly well and they are actually round which is uh, again quite unusual these days. They tend to end up being square. One difference here, notice these are not actually retracted or out when you get it. They're pressed in. Whereas these you can put the wires straight in and then turn the screws down on top. Whether that's a huge difference, really, I don't think it's a major difference, but one problem with them being pulled out when you get it is that they quite often jam in the out position and then uh, actually have to be uh, sheared off when you tighten them up. But there's sort of pros and cons for both options. Now, are these captive screws, or in fact, do they fall out when you do them too far? Let's, let's find out. 
well no they're not captive they fall out when you undo them too far but again that's pretty common with this style of accessory the answer there of course is to not undo them too far and uh, of course they're supposed to be captive because it says um, essential features like backed out and captive screws but those are definitely not backed out or captive and neither are they let's just see on this one if they are captive they don't look as if they are no they're not so uh, that information is incorrect they are not backed out and they're not captive either so here's the uh, socket outlet so uh, both of these single obviously with switch so sort of direct comparison there on the back the logic plus has the terminals backed out with the screws uh, ready to be screwed down onto those two earth terminals one either side linked by the bar this one also has the screws backed out so uh, at least that in the marketing thing is partially correct at least with a socket anyway and again has the two earth terminals one here and then another one over here separately and again these are not in line but again that's quite common on uh, most things the all in a line style there is relatively uncommon so uh, that's what we have there now uh, decently recessed there even in the backed out position so they're not going to be uh, catching on to any of those and notably these are the sort of rectangular or square style of terminal which is significantly more common so if we uh, go into there and tighten that one down yes it's doing the usual mk thing where they're super tight in the pulled out position that's uh, pretty much part of the course there and then say so this is your other earth terminal here now let's take the front off of this so that's the front there now there is an earth connection here which would basically go to the screws and through to the back box but it's notably only on one side so it's got one there but of course nothing here this is just plastic and yeah it's just that side there there's no earth connection to the screw on this side whatsoever all of the others have it on both sides there and again comes through to the front there on the socket as well but Ali, the uh, fcu of the uh, newer style has that on both sides but for some reason this single socket doesn't only have it one side so not too clear with that one now in theory that is acceptable to connect the earth to the back box here's your uh, typical back box so it just goes into one of the lugs now i say in theory it's acceptable because generally you want to attach it to the fixed lug and not the adjustable one because of course the fact it's adjustable means it's not a particularly reliable connection to the box it's uh, fairly loose in there so if you put this box this way up and then attach this on it that goes through into the fixed lug but uh, if you put the box in the wall this way round and that actually is the way that this one is supposed to go with the wording in the back then it's going straight into the adjustable lug so uh, Hmm, not really uh, the best of choices there and the reality is you're not going to be fussing about with things like that at the uh, first fix stage because you're not going to have these to hand at that time it is notable that this will fit onto a 25 millimeter back box stick out there is uh, certainly adequate for clearance there so that's absolutely fine the uh, other one unfortunately will not because i see the flex uh, piece there is sticking out too far so that will not fit as you can see there it's just simply too big so you're going to have to use a 35 millimeter box for that which is one of them no way that's going to fit on a 25 and uh, as we saw previously the other one uh, switch doesn't fit there either this one which is the logic plus does fit on a 25 although in reality you probably wouldn't want to because it's going to be extremely difficult to get the wires in but just a question of what's uh, possible and what's not now in terms of switching these have got a decent uh, snap action they're not too gungy if you try and put it halfway it kind of can be done to there but it's it's pretty difficult to get it to just uh, sort of gunge between the two as are these and so the point is it shouldn't be able to be uh, stuck between the two seems fairly robust Light switches basically a similar deal. You know, if I put it between the two, it clicks to those. This one, 
yeah, similar thing. So you can't get it sort of arc between the contacts when it's in a sort of a mid position. There is a decent amount of snap on it. And the socket one, again, pretty much the same deal. That might be a bit on the soft side, but not too bad. Otherwise, now one on the socket here, there's just one other major difference. This one, as we've seen in the previous video on the double socket, has a deal with the shutters that you have to actually put the thing in all three holes. So if something has to go in there, and it basically spreads two things apart. And then here, the pins have to press on these angled bits of plastic simultaneously to open the shutter. So you can't get a metal object or any object and press in here and get onto a live contact because it's completely closed off until a three pin plug actually goes in. This one not surprisingly has the cheaper version which is basically operated by the earth pin so when the pin goes in that just opens the two contacts at the bottom. This is still valid on the uh, standard year 1363 but of course it is a cheaper version but then as this is a cheaper product that's pretty much exactly what you'd expect to find so it's just got the one where the thing goes in but it does have the shutters there of course that is a requirement of the standard and uh, prevents uh, things being shoved in there. And this one is a single pole switch, meaning it only switches the line. This is a double pole, so it switches line and neutral. Now that's again not really a particularly significant thing, because if you're going to use it for isolation, you remove the plug, so it doesn't really matter whether it's a single or double pole. And of course you can buy these with no switch at all, so uh, the fact that it's uh, single or double doesn't really change a whole lot. The only time it would is if you were going to say switch it off and not unplug it and there was some fault on it between neutral and earth that would say continuously trip your RCD but then if it's going to do that so your toaster has a crumb stuck in it or something then of course the central thing is to unplug it and obviously that gets rid of the fault so uh, although that is a double pole and this is a single that's not a particularly significant or relevant difference for most things. So Logic Plus or Essentials one is slightly cheaper than the other which one is cheaper, of course, seems to depend on where you buy it and what offers and things are on at the time, but in any case, the cost difference between these is not particularly significant, and in the scheme of, say, rewiring an entire house, the cost of white accessories is not particularly significant either, regardless of who you buy them from. The vast majority of the cost, of course, is the labour, and all the rest of the stuff, like the cables, consumer unit, and all the hundreds of downlighters, and all the other stuff that people want these days. So, saving 50 quid on the cost of an installation on some white sockets is not particularly relevant when you're spending £5,000 on a full rewire, but uh, nevertheless some people might find that an attractive option. Now uh, that's all for today because we're doing this inside. In a later episode we're going to put these under some other tests, so we're going to put some uh, current through these and see what happens when they're overloaded, and we're just going to see if this polycarbonate material is fire retardant in any way compared to the uh, urea formaldehyde type resin of the others. But uh, until then, thanks for watching.